I'll ask if you would, if you have your Bibles or your handouts, either one. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And if you notice on there, if you got to use the handouts, uh, we're going to read verse 8 and through verse number 15. Okay? And if you have your Bibles or either way, you want to turn there. And let's all stand for the reading of God's Word and making our good confession. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. The Apostle Paul here is talking to the church at Corinth. And there's many difficult things that the church at Corinth is going through right now. Um, he even refers to them as babes in Christ. In other words, spiritually they're not growing up. This particular passage that I'm going to be reading has to do with the subject of rewards. In verse number 8 he said, Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry, kind of like a farmer a plowing the field or cultivating the field. Ye are God, God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid a foundation and another built thereon. But let every man take heed, take attention, pay attention, take heed, listen carefully, now he buildeth thereupon. For, no, for other foundations can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. It's very important that you notice that. Which is, which is, uh, that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. In other words, nothing more important foundation-wise than that right there. Now if any man builds upon the foundation of gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, revealed, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abides, which he there built upon, in other words, it doesn't burn up, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, it's not talking about salvation, he's talking about rewards here. For if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so by fire. Verse 15, another way of saying this is to save people that's going to smell like smoke, okay? If any man's work shall be burned, then he shall suffer loss. Not loss of salvation, but loss of rewards. But he himself shall be saved, yet so by fire. Let's make our good confession. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I'm about to receive the indestructible, incorruptible, ever living seed of the Word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is hungry. My heart is receptive. Speak, Lord, thy servant here. I'll never be the same. Never, never, never. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much. We have been doing a series of messages over the past five weeks on the subject of success. You know, this is the dream of every man, woman, boy, girl, child. This is the dream of every parent to see their child become a success. This is the dream for every grandparent to see their grandkids become a success. However, what do you call success? What determines as a person goes through life, what is success? Or are they successful? There's truly only one way to find out. And that's through the Word of God. Now if you're wondering why we have spent, this is the sixth week, this is the finale, this is the end of the series, on this subject, it's simply because, believe it or not, a misunderstanding. A misunderstanding, or you could say a lack of thought, when defining the word success among believers. I'm speaking of unbelievers, but among believers. In other words, let me give you an example. Let's just say there's a celebrity. 
a celebrity, and he or she's a real good person. A real good person. And they have worked, and they have become popular, they've become famous, and they have worked hard, they have traveled, they have done this and done that, and they have made so much money that they live in the nicest of home, uh, they're married, got kids, all this stuff, and he has made so much money, or she has made so much money, that, they're, that they, could, they could live off for the rest of their life. Not only could they live off for the rest of their life, but their kids could live off, and their grandkids could live off. In fact, their grandkids' grandkids could live off of. We would call them a success. But think about it. Let's just suppose there's a family, or a single person, or a single parent, either or, and, and, and they're struggling to make ends meet. I mean, they're really trying and they're barely surviving. There's just no extra at the end of the month. But you know, they're saved and they're living for the Lord. Now, in the end, who's really more successful? You see, that's what I mean, is, is how we determine what's success. Most of the time, when us as parents and grandparents were so concerned about our children's education and occupation that we leave the most important part out, and that is their spiritual life or their relationship with Christ. Now, I know, and I, I mean, if a person is financially secure and, quote, they live high on the hog, we call them a success. And by no means am I not saying money, occupation, or education is not important because it is. It is important. However, according to the Word of God, this doesn't determine whether a person is success. Folks, we got people in, in prison today with PhDs. We got, we got people in prison today that are head of, was once head of large companies. That doesn't determine, according to the Word of God, whether you're a success or not. The good news is that there is a measuring stick for everyone to determine whether you have been a success or not. Now, there's something you need to understand about this measuring stick. Actually, two things. The final analysis won't be done until you leave this world. Basically, the final analysis won't be done until after you're dead. Okay? That's one part of it. But the other part of it is you can, you can be pretty sure or be sure of the results before you leave earth. And in just a second, I'm going to tell you how you know for sure the results. But before I do that, I want to leave you with something today, and actually it's a, it's a question. Please listen to me, because if you hear nothing else today, this is what I want you to hear. Okay? In fact, this is the title of our message this morning. I'll explain it later at the end of the sermon. But this is what I want you to, to think about. Okay? And it's, it's a question, and it's the title of our message, and it's what I want you to leave with today. How many legs does a dog have if you call their tail a leg? Let me say that again. How many legs does a dog have if you call their tail a leg? That's the title of our message, and that's what I want you to leave with today. Now, I'm going to come back to that, but there's something else I need to cover first. Okay? I know you all look at me like a, a bull looking at a new gate or something, so just hang in there with me, okay? What I want to do this morning is I want to first answer another question. Over the last few weeks, we have given the definition of success based upon a summary of the Word of God. That definition goes like this. Success is knowing Jesus Christ as my Savior, loving Him with all my heart, and becoming the person God wants me to become. Amen. That is when you're 
a success. Right.